to take this opportunity to tell you how I discovered my life's work. And even better, I'm going to give you two for the price of one. So I'm going to tell you how my partner, Carl Palmer, also discovered his life's work. This is not the path that either one of us started on, because that path didn't exist. Rather, it was only after throwing off the blinders of our traditional career paths that we were able to see the opportunity to create something totally new. These are sea-run Chinook salmon. They've traveled over 1,000 river miles and over eight major dams in a journey from the Pacific Ocean to central Idaho. A different cycle of salmon does this every single year in an effort to reach the place where they were born in order to lay their own eggs and spawn and keep the cycle going. The problem is that on the property shown here, the salmon were cut off from that ancestral spawning grounds and they were dying before they had a chance to reproduce. Through the action, acquisition of a single property and our restoration work on that property, we've been able to increase the number of salmon able to spawn by over 30 times. This single project may prove critical to the survival of salmon in the lower 48 states. This is a development near Jackson Hole. It failed, not once, not twice, but three times. The tragedy is that it never should have been developed at all, given that it's considered to be one of the most ecologically important properties in the Jackson area, and it's completely surrounded by national forest. It counts wildlife such as bears, Yellowstone cutthroat, trout, and more as its inhabitants. The developers had the ability to put upwards of 80 structures on this property. As you can see from the top photo, they started many of these, but they never finished a single one. We've acquired this property, cleaned up all the decrepit structures, the junk piles, restored the river system, and rehabilitated the pastures. These are mining tailing piles, waste piles, from gold mining operations in Colorado near Breckenridge from the early 1900s. At nine feet tall, not only are they unsightly and hazardous, but they're also a hindrance to the wildlife that inhabit this critical conservation area. We have cleaned up these waste piles, restored the creek, and rehabilitated the pastures. As you can tell, I get kind of fired up about this stuff. And now I'm going to tell you how we got here. That's my partner, Carl Palmer, and me. From early on, we went in very different directions. Carl liked playing with snakes and frogs, and I liked playing businessman. <laughs> Carl literally watched as his childhood playground, the Everglades, was paved over with asphalt and tract homes. Well, I watched the 1980s version of The Great Gatsby unfold, as seemingly anyone smart enough to put their savings in the stock market became an instant millionaire. We didn't know each other at the time. <laughs> but had we bumped into each other, I probably would have thought Carl was a tree-hugging hippie, and he probably would have thought I was a capitalist pig. We wouldn't have been too wrong either. After graduating from college, Carl took a job in the conservation world in Jackson Hole, Wyoming with the Teton Science Schools. I took a job on Wall Street with Morgan Stanley. We didn't focus on it at the time, but we were starting to question a couple of things. Carl was wondering if his father's advice to get an MBA and to go into finance might not be right. And I was starting to wonder how on earth my passion for the American West and my family's ranch in Wyoming would ever play into a work life. When you look more closely at our career paths, you can see that they're bounded by a traditional way of thinking about how to achieve success in those paths. Yet, in the conservation world, Carl came face to face with the fact that there simply is not enough capital out there to protect and restore all the critical places that need that protection and restoration. In fact, the lack of funds was resulting in conservation professionals losing the war. An area roughly two times the size of Rhode Island is developed in the U.S. every single year. And at the low end of scientific estimates, 200 to 2,000 species go extinct globally every single year. During his time in the nonprofit conservation field, Carl watched his opportunity after opportunity was missed as a result of a lack of funds. I had the opposite problem in the investing world. Too much money was chasing too few good opportunities. There are over 18,000 investment firms in the US. They manage about $16 trillion, and they invest roughly $500 billion a year. With so many investors, and the fact that instant information is instantaneously available to all of them, means that it's really hard, nearly impossible, to find mispriced investment opportunities. Yet that's what I was on the search for a niche, a market, a strategy, 
in which information was not quickly and thoroughly distributed, one in which I had more information than others, that would tilt the tables in my favor. So Carl and I took our frustrations with the traditional way of doing things in our industries to Stanford Business School. <laughs> Carl wanted to find a for-profit way to harness capital for conservation. And I wanted to find that elusive market that was tilted in my favor, and one in which my work left the world a better place. And that was the aha moment. What if we could take a tiny sliver of that investment capital and put it to work for a good cause? In our case, restoration and protection of the American West. It would provide conservation professionals with a whole new source of funds for conservation in one of the most ecologically important places on the planet. And what if we could offer investors the opportunity to invest in a market in which information was not quickly and thoroughly distributed, one in which we had more information than our competitors? That should allow us to earn strong, long-term returns. So, much to the confusion and chagrin of many of our peers and mentors, we jumped off those traditional career paths and we raised a private equity fund investing in ranch land. The goal is to generate strong financial returns for, for investors through the restoration and protection of ecologically important properties. Doing the right environmental thing is not a liability or a detractor from the financial returns. Rather, it drives our competitive advantage and thus drives those returns. We focus on the Western ranch market as a result of its recreational appeal and critical importance conservationally. It's a market in which people value wide open spaces, horseback riding, hunting, hiking, fishing, you name it. All things that go hand in hand with conservation. So, in this market, we invest in and acquire undervalued, ecologically important ranch properties as a result of our informational advantages. Try to remember the first home you ever purchased. You were probably provided with an MLS listing, some information on comparable properties, and then you were asked to reduce that down to a price per square foot, leaving emotion completely out of the equation. Well, the ranch market is like that first home purchase on steroids. There is no MLS service. There's no publicly accessible database for ranch transactions. And there's no central clearinghouse for ranch transactions. The result is that emotional considerations can sometimes swing the price of a ranch by millions of dollars. And that is exactly what a professional investor working without emotion can seize upon, an inefficient market. So within this market, after we've acquired these properties, we create value on them. We create value legally and or physically. From a legal perspective, we've worked on several properties in which the seller of a property has not had a legal right to get to their own property and build a home there. They've been cut off by a neighbor. We've solved that problem. From a physical perspective, we put bridges over creeks and rivers so that the prospective buyer of a property can actually reach the property they're considering buying. We've cleaned up mining waste sites. And as shown here, and on this slide as well, we've taken river systems that have been channeled into ditches and pulled them out of those ditches and put them back in their natural meandering path, making them much more aesthetically pleasing and, of course, much richer in habitat. Throughout this whole process, we work in partnership with conservation groups. These partnerships provide us with proprietary deal flow, risk minimization through early cash flow events and cash um, cost uh, shares, and then a, a sales pipeline. Now, the most fun part of all this is the results. The financial returns are easy to calculate. The conservation results are easy to see. Due to restored lands and waters, agriculture benefits. Due to restored lands and waters, cleaned up waste sites, new areas for public access, communities benefit. For these same reasons, wildlife, from trout to elk, benefit. And of course, the land itself also benefits. And that's my story. A story of how two people with very different visions for success and very different careers, came together to throw off the blinders of those traditional careers and to seize the opportunity to create something totally new, our life's work. Thank you.